Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest on the show today. He is kind of the new man on the block when it comes to Saskatchewan politics. He was recently elected the leader of the Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan, and that is Philip Sajak. Phil, thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure. Well, thank you for having me on the show. It's uh, it's great to be here, and uh, this is my... Uh first live interview so thanks for having me hey no worries i'm, I'm glad that we can uh we'll, we'll ease you into it because i'm assuming Murray <laughs> mandrick will probably be a little bit harder on you than i will be over there uh, okay um but phil if you've listened to the show before you know what the first question is going to be and that is where does your sense of duty to serve come from well i think that's the biggest part of this uh uh political journey that i've gone on when i was first uh, I, I would I would have to say Southeast Saskatchewan has been very good to me and my family. Uh, I think that it is the most giving community I've ever uh, witnessed in the world. Um, I've been fortunate to live, you know, in Regina and different cities. And when when people are in need in this area, everybody helps. Uh, so how can I give back? That was my in my my thought process is what can I do. Um, because Southeast Saskatchewan, uh, as far as the last election, you know, was concerned, you know, we are, we're in some, some trouble here. And uh, so how can I give back? I, I thought, you know what, I have a strong personality. Um, I think I've got uh, my, my listening skills and my life experience. Uh, give me a good uh, brush of different classes and uh, types of uh, society. And I think that um, I'm a strong enough voice that I can advocate for the people of Southeast Saskatchewan. And, and now I have the opportunity to advocate for the people of all of Saskatchewan. I think uh, I love this province. I think it's uh, uh, the, the opportunity for us here in Saskatchewan is enormous. And we just need to use some common sense and get get the the, the make the possibilities a reality is, I guess, the thing. So that's kind of my passion of politics. And, and um, when when you the other nice thing about politics in general the quality of people that you get to meet that care is it's phenomenal. Like I, so many, so many individuals who care about their communities and want this, uh, you know, province to be successful. Uh, and I, I'm just, I'm, I'm honored to be able to represent them uh, and, and, uh, and I'll do a good job of advocating for them. Now, the Buffalo Party is relatively a new party, but in the last provincial election, you placed a, you had a good showing. The party had a good showing. Uh, you placed third. That is a, a rare feat in Saskatchewan politics for an upstart party to do uh, third. While we'll talk about the election and talk about the future of the party and your leadership, I want to get to know you a little bit more because I followed the uh, leadership race that you ran and were successful in, and I watched the debate that you and uh, your competitor had, and I found it interesting that your your journey in politics didn't start provincially. It started with one issue, and that is libraries. And I I can't believe I'm having a conversation about libraries, but here we are in 2022 talking about libraries. So talk to me about that decision, about getting involved and having the Saskatchewan government under Brad Wall, remember, overturn mm -hmm. a decision in their budget. Well, that, okay. I I'll, I'll give you the cliff note version of my library career. I, I, I love the library. Um, I think it's a focal point of, of communities, uh, especially uh, when you're new to a community. Uh, you know, when you need to, uh, you know, a lot of times people, when they move here, uh, you don't have your internet hooked up right away. So, you, you know, you can go to the library and you can use the internet or um, it's, a, it's a great place for uh, kids to, to go where it's safe, you know, and, and um, our library, the things that we did over the six years that, that I was uh, chairman on that board, it's, it's just a cool place to be. Uh, we have kids zones, um, you know, if, uh, you know uh, kids can't afford playstations, we have playstations and TVs and they can come and play games right there uh, in, in the safety of the library. So I was in the library and, um, you know, spending time there and uh, Kate Lee, who was the branch manager at the time, uh, just said, hey, you know, I see you, you like the library and, you know, we have some people who are, or, you know, who are about to retire and um, would you be interested in being on the board? So I said, sure, you know, I, I'll, you know, in banking and 
and um, yeah, I'll be on the board. Uh, so then after a short period of time, uh, Kately asked me if I would uh, take over the board and, um, and uh, be the chairman. And I, of course, I said, you know, it's hard to say no. So I said, sure, you know, I would do that. And um, so basically to get to that event, what happened was, was and, and uh, library budgets are always uh, scrutinized uh, quite heavily, I think, by by both your city and and provincial governments, because uh, they do command a fairly large uh, amount of money each year. And what what uh, most people don't realize is the amount of savings that the library actually provides for communities. So when this happened and they decided to cut our funding uh, right away, uh, Kate Lee, who is fantastic, you know, was like, OK, we can't have this happen. Um, and so then we started to formulate a plan and then started coordinating with all the other libraries and we decided to have our readout kind of uh, sit out day and, um, and and I, you know, I expected, you know, maybe 30 or 40 people, you know, to show up at um, the current minister for Estevan's office uh, and there was literally 250 300 people and there was everyone from little kids in uh, strollers with books to grandmas with books. Uh, and and people found out pretty quick that you can take money from lots of places, but don't take it from the library. And it was all across the province, and it was just an awesome thing. And and that's you know Brad Wall, uh, he's a good guy, and that's what he said. Hey, sorry, this was a bad idea. And and um, and I think as a leader, if you have that ability to do that, uh, it, that's what endears you to the population, right? Is nobody's perfect and that was just a bad bad idea for communities and um, even when we present our our plan and our budget you know to the the city council here in Estevan <clears throat> on a we basically ran one free program a day for the community every day of the year is what it works out to so you know seniors can come in and do pottery uh, kids can come in and play games uh, we we they did this um uh, miniature golf indoors where they made the holes with books and the little you know the kids just love it and uh you know and, and on our counter you know on any given day we're anywhere from 800 to 1900 people coming through the Estevan library so it's it's a it's a great place to be and I, I'm really proud of what we accomplished there so how does a guy who kind of didn't have any background in politics become the chair of a board decide you know what Usually you might start off municipally, but you've decided I'm going to run in Estevan in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, it was the last election, correct me if I'm wrong here, Phil, but I'm going to put my name yep. forward for the 2020 Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan's uh, election here in the riding that I live in. How did that transition go? Was it that you were pissed off at the Saskatchewan party? How did you get involved with the Buffalo party? Well, um, the Buffalo party was... Uh... You know, I, I started to educate myself about them, you know, just because I like to read and just like you, I, you know, I follow politics and um, a little bit about my political history. I had previously uh, ran in a nomination event for the Conservative Party, and i had also ran as a federal candidate for the PPC. Um, the PPC's, you know, uh, principles are not far off of the Buffalo Party's, um, you know, I ideology as far as politics goes. And so Tim Huber at the time, and I hope he doesn't mind me uh, mentioning his name, but uh, he, you know, surely was our interim uh, leader here while we were going through the process of uh, electing a new leader. But uh, Tim um, is, is one of the nicest people I've ever met. He, uh, you know, is a, is, a, is a business owner in town. Uh, he was the one who said, you know, uh, I heard you speak, you know, uh, uh, publicly for the PPC yeah. and uh, your values are kind of bang on with ours and what we want. And um, and he said, I, I'm, I'm not asking you to make a commitment today. He's but he's like, I want to put a bug in your ear. And maybe, you know, uh, he goes, we're in trouble here in, in Southeast and we need somebody to uh, help us. And, um, you know, when, <laughs> when, when you send out the right guy, like, he's the nicest person how do you tell him no right like uh um they they do so much for the community and and the people of Estevan it, it you know it's it, again it's it's a privilege to get to meet people like that and and uh just the 
the support, you know, I said, Tim, I've been through a federal election. I said, it's, I'm, you know, I'm, and he's Exhausted. like, it's okay. Yeah. He's like, you've got help. You know, we're, we'll, we'll get people, we'll help you. And uh, everything he said was true. And um, he, uh, he was the one who got me to do it. But again, this is, uh, you know, when I was, when I was changing out of the oil field or from working in the oil field and trying to decide my life career, I, I got accepted to a couple of medical schools. Um, and I, I almost went to med school because I thought, you know what, this is a good way for me to give back too. Right. I can, you know, I'm a living in Estevan. I can go finish my two years of med school because I have a bachelor's degree and yeah. come back here and be a doctor. And, uh, you know, that just wasn't kind of the life plan and it changed. So um, I just think that uh, I have a strong enough personality. And I think that's what you need in politics today to be able to say no when things are wrong and, and uh, make that change. And I think that's what, you know, the, the core theme of our, our party is just common sense politics. None of us are politicians. You know, we're, we're ranchers, we're, you know, ex-police, we're um, uh, Everyday people, people that work SAS power, you know, uh, we're, yeah. And, and, and we have ideas that just make sense. And, and, and I think that's the coolest thing about this party in general is we always talk about, you know, well, we'll do this and this. And we're like, well, that's just common sense. And I, and I, as more and more of a mantra, that just becomes our theme is that this stuff's not complicated. You can make it as complicated as you want, but at the end of the day, just use common sense and use a common sense approach to what you want to do and make a plan. And, and that's what the Buffalo party is doing right now. I want to talk about the 2020 election here for a second. Mm -hmm. And I want, because anyone outside of Saskatchewan knows that the SAS party under Scott Moe and Brad Wall is a force to be reckoned with. They, they have a monopoly on that province. But when you were at the doors, door knocking, talking to your neighbors, talking to the constituents that you wanted to vote, were people receptive enough to say, we would potentially vote for you? Let us think about it. Or were they very much black and white? I, I'm either going to vote for you or I'm not going to vote for you because I want to keep the NDP out of power, the Liberals out of power, so on and so forth. No, I th I think that um, the support that was generated in this community in a sh very short period of time, uh, we we essentially had three months to get ready, you know, to run. Uh, when I when I was talking to people around here, it was it it was really they were so nice and they're thankful you know saying thank you for doing this and for giving us a, another option right that's part of the the you know the political scenery in saskatchewan's been there has been no other options and and um even after like when when uh people who and and like i said as as a human being if you vote for me that's great if you don't vote for me that's okay too and and uh that's the freedom of choice in a democracy right and I've had some people, you know, say, hey, I like your policies and I like all these things, but I can't vote for you. And I'm like, that's OK. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's OK. It's 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 this is not one by one vote or two votes. I go, but you have the freedom to vote. Right. And and so even after the election, some people who you know basically voted SAS party line just because they've always voted for SAS party um, were kind enough to come up to me either in person or by phone call or text after and say, you know what? we wish we would have voted for you, you know, because, because we're seeing what's happening now and what you were saying was true, right? Like the, 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 um, you know, I did the two, two debates, you know, one in Estevan and I did the final one in Regina and, um, and uh, I just wanted to show the people of Estevan that I was able to uh, uh, carry myself with experienced politicians and reflect the needs of Estevan on that stage. And I, uh, I, I think I did a really good job and, and uh, I think I surprised a lot of people. So, so like I said, if we would have had, and you know, we, we had the comments, you know, um, Brad Wall made a comment, um, some of the uh, conservative uh, uh, MPs made comments that if, this, if the Buffalo party would have had six months to get ready, it might've been a different story. And um, with, you know, us gaining, you know, uh, essentially 25% of the vote in Estevan in a three month prep time, uh, you know, like, like Bradwell said, the SAS party needs to kind of wake up here because things are starting to change.
Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's CBI Caesars, all one word. Just visit CalgaryCaesarFest.com and get your tickets today. You're the king of segways. Uh, you must have, have your own sports show where you're great at segways. <laughs> yes, but right. um, I want to talk about issues. And you talked about people coming up to you after the election and asking you about or telling you, we, 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 we've woken up, we see what's happening, and it's what you said was happening. Yep. So let's start off with the big question. And it's the million dollar question that I ask a lot of politicians What is the big issue that is affecting the people of Saskatchewan? right now and how is the current provincial government not addressing it well i think what what i see for the whole province of saskatchewan right now is uh we we have some well and i think it's a problem federally too but we have taxation problems here we we have no creativity in how to create revenue other than to simply tax something else um so when you look around the room and there's no ideas of, of a way to create revenue for the province other than taxing the people that reside here, it's a problem. And, and that's why you need, like, like as, a, as, a, as, a, as a person, I can't, I don't have the answers to every problem in the province. I'm never gonna be able to fix everything because I just don't know. And, and I think a good leader understands that and says that, you know, like how do I, how do I fix the cross-border sales of cattle from Saskatchewan into Alberta? Well, I don't know, right? But, I'll get people around me that live in that area that know how to fix it. And you get those people to give you the ideas and then that creates more revenue, right? For the people of Saskatchewan. So I think that's a, that's a big problem here is, is it's a tax and spend government. Um, the SAS party through their years of tenure here have wasted the opportunity to run a balanced budget when oil was very good and booming, you know, through the, the uh, early two thousands. And uh, once the you know, once the, you know, Oil business is cyclical, just like any business. Once it hit 2014 and everything stopped, they weren't prepared. So I think, uh, again, as a planner for the economy, you know, in this budget that was just released, uh, they, they, they slip little things in that they know they're not going to get any press on, you know, like removing the $4 million for kids in motion. That's not a good, that's, a, that's like a library. Like that's not a program that all it does is help kids and coaches in sports in Saskatchewan. Why does that have to get cut? You know, uh, so. Well, I, what, I found it interesting that I, I, I read the budget because I'm kind of a nerd and I read budget, but <laughs> that's what I do on my spare time while other people are watching the Oilers or the Rough, uh, the rough Riders. I, yeah. I, I, I read budgets. And I found it interesting that Scott Moe's government did introduce a few new uh, items that are going to be taxed under the PST, including uh, sporting events, which is quite ironic because I, in Saskatchewan, like everyone is a uh, football fan and I can just imagine how that went over, but I didn't hear about it. I didn't hear, like, and I'm from Alberta, I'm, I'm living in Alberta right now, but was it a big deal when there was PST added to uh, sporting events, uh, concerts, all these things that you kind of take for granted, but now have to pay a little bit extra to the provincial government. Again, yeah, and th this is this is a uh, uh, something that we we you know, I'm very happy for alternative media sources because you're not going to get a lot of you you'll, you'll get a small shot of it, and the small shot that we got here was they they even are taxing your gym membership now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so if if the mantra is correct. We want you to be healthy. We want you to go to the gym. We want you to work out, which eases the pain on our medical system. But we're going to tax you if you decide to go to the gym. And and it's like that. I just I really <laughs> when I think about living in Saskatchewan right now, I just don't know what else they can tax. I I don't know. You know they they've introduced this is the tax that I think burns a lot of Saskatchewan people. 
is the used car tax. And I don't, I don't know about Alberta, but you could pay tax on a car that is less than 10 years old. If it gets sold six times in six years, you pay tax on that car six times, every time it changes hands privately. Yeah. So if I, if I sell um, my, my friend, Jim, my 2014 uh, Chevy Cavalier, he gets paid tax on it. And then if he sells it a year later, they, whoever buys it pays tax on it again. It's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's just stunning. It's the rotating door of taxes that the, and don't get me wrong. I don't live in Saskatchewan. So I would never try to assume that I know exactly what is people's on, on people's mind in Saskatchewan, but I look at it and I go, Brad Wall wouldn't have introduced that. Like Brad oh, Wall, wait. like what is like what's happening with Scott Moe right now? That's what I want to know. Well, I would, I, I, and and again, the a lot of people have forgotten this that you know the SAS party when they when they merged themselves, uh, a lot were very liberal, and a lot were conservative. So uh, the, you can't hide the fact that in the last provincial election, the candidate from Saskatoon who ran for uh, the SAS party lost in as a liberal in the federal election so there's no disguising it and you can't say well they're a liberal but they have conservative values because that's not true they're a liberal who was running federally as a liberal candidate but now because they think they will win just because it's the sas party name uh that's their values and I, that's part of the problem that the sas party can't figure out is 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 they have this image of being a conservative party but the makeup of the party is not conservative in their mindset. And, and that's why, uh, you know, when you, when you start looking at some of the things that are happening and I just call them tax and spend governments, right? We don't have any creativity. So we'll just tax whatever we can. And, and you know what, eh, people complain for a little bit, but then they'll just go on their way. Um, just like our new fuel tax, you know, we're, we're going into, you know, in the midst of a recession where the bank of Canada is raising interest rates. So let's see, what should we do? People don't have any money. Um, you know, a, a bag of apples costs ten dollars. Let's throw a fuel tax, uh, you know, eleven cents or fifteen cents, and and it's okay. Like it's okay because you know now fuel, you know, uh, when you know six months ago it costs hundred dollars to fill up your tank. Well, now it's one hundred ninety dollars. So how does that hurt the economy? Well, now people don't travel. Now people don't go on vacation because they just can't afford it. And and I think politicians forget that sometimes, right? That you know, if you're if you're a, a single mom with three kids and it's $150 to fill up your fuel tank and you got rent and food and everything's more expensive, you can't take your kids anywhere because because you can barely pay for groceries. And I think, you know, then, you know, the Buffalo Party is for termed positions in the government. I think that, you know, why is why does the U.S. Uh, president only allowed to be in two terms? There's a reason because people get. Hey, I've been a I've been an MLA for twenty years. Well, <laughs> okay. What you have, have you done after ideas? year eight? <laughs> yeah, you have no no new ideas. You sit on a few boards and oh, and tax people. So, and like a lot of the the great ideas that we've come up with as a party, I can't even announce yet because what's happening right now with the SAS party, and this is kind of cool for us. Uh, the NDP has no relevance as an opposition in, in our government here. They, they don't do anything. But um, Scott Moe and the SAS party keep adopting our founding principles of, you know, we're going after our own taxation. We're, we're, we're going to be, a, he, he set up the minister of autonomy for, well, what does he do? Well, he hasn't autonomized anything, but he's a new minister. Collects a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. And those are all because of us. Right. Like Scott Moe through the whole election wouldn't say the word Buffalo party, wouldn't say it. Um, and he finally, because after the election, every first reporter's question was, hey, what about the Buffalo party? What about the Buffalo party? And he finally said Buffalo party. And and uh, so that's what we keep talking about. We have all these we have very good ideas for common sense stuff. And so we, we say that all the time. Well, if you want to know what the SAS party is going to do next, just go to the Buffalo party website and read our, our founding uh, principles and our constitution. And you'll know what the Buffalo Party or the SAS Party is going to do next. So let's talk about the Sasca the Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan. And let's start with the, 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 the question that's on everyone, everyone's mind. 
who are the Saskatchewan part, uh, the Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan? Sorry, we've said Saskatchewan Party and Buffalo Party. I get them mixed <laughs> up all the time now. But all right, we- who 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 is and what does the Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan stand for? Well, I'm gonna. This is the one thing that I'm gonna say first and foremost in every interview that I do. Um, we're not a separatist party. Okay, so the, the, what what these other parties are trying to do, and other and other people, they're trying to push us as hey. These guys are a separatist party, and that's what they're that's what they're about. That's not true at all. Um, we, as a party, um, we're member driven. We're not a top down organization like the other political parties. Uh, the Buffalo Party, right in its constitution, has no whip. So, uh, for those of you that are watching that aren't sure what a whip is, um, if some of the uh, MLAs or uh, MPs don't get don't agree with exactly what you're going to do they kind of whip you in line to get you to vote with the rest of the pack that's another thing that i like about the buffalo party if oil is very important to me and coal in southeast saskatchewan and a, and a person who's a, a mla in a pa or saskatoon doesn't care about oil and doesn't care about coal that's okay because you know what uh, your opinion is is worth just as much value as mine and this party won't blackball people you know, if you if you don't feel that you're not representing your party, your your people, and your constituency, and voting for an, a bill that we present for oil, that's okay. You know, it's it's a the it's not a it's not a uh, uh, it's not you're not strangleholding all your candidates or MLAs. Exactly. It sounds like, and it sounds, and I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna challenge you, and I don't like to challenge yep. my guests, but okay. I'm gonna challenge you on that for a bit because. We are in a very divided time right now. And I want to just talk about oil and gas for one second because you brought it up. So let's talk about it. We have parties in this country, in this in in your province, in my province, who are who say if you're against the oil and gas sector, you're against the province. While it's great that you can say, stand, sit there and say to me right here, right now, that we would never whip our vote. Isn't that allowing people to attack the Buffalo Party by saying you're not for oil and gas and you're truly not standing up for the hardworking people of Saskatchewan? Well, and I think that's this is this is how I would answer that is as a core policy, right? We we support oil and gas, we are anti-carbon tax, and we are pro agriculture and we are pro resources, period. Again, that's not going to be everybody's bucket of tea. And, and that's how life is. And, and if you want to live in a true democracy, you have to allow people, even when they're in your own party, to live with the beliefs that they believe in. Okay. So, and, and we, we go through this all the time with like board meetings when, when you're on a board and you think you have a great idea, right? I think I've got a great idea. And you present it to the board and it goes to a vote. Well, guess what? If I lose the vote five to four, and, it, and I think it was a great idea, well, guess what? Five other people didn't. And so guess what? I live with it. I don't complain about it. I don't stomp my feet and have a temper tantrum. This is democracy and this is how it works. So yeah, we're gonna advocate for the people of Saskatchewan. The thing about oil and gas, and, and I think most of the people in Saskatchewan and Alberta understand this, that if we don't sell oil and gas, we have no possible way to ever get out of the deficit that has been laid at our feet here for the future like there's we have no other commodity that has the possibility that that we already have the infrastructure to produce to help us get out of this debt and and we all know we have just as much oil as saudi arabia and we could live and drill as much oil as we want but we don't because the government gets in our way all the time and the government, and, and we know this because I'm not a politician, the main thing that governments do wrong is most of the things they do. Uh, they get in the way of business and, and uh, small business and enterprises. And, and, uh, and at the end of the day, the government just keeps writing checks that they don't have the money for. And you can't operate, like I can't run my home like that. How could you run a, how can you run a province like that? There has to be a time where common sense comes into play and you say, hey, Here's our here's our revenue. Here's our net. Here, we can work in the middle. We can't do any more. And people would understand that, right? People would understand because we we do it every day. 
right? If, if, if I don't have money to go to the movie on Tuesday night, I just can't go. And, and I think that, uh, the, I think the people of Saskatchewan would understand this. And, and uh, again, I think the, the general population is looking for some common sense just back in politics. And, and, and it's not hard. You just gotta, you just gotta put the ideas forward. Horror fans unite. The cross-border interviews with Chris Brown is pleased to offer a free audible copy of David Mercer's newest book, Living Death, A Love Story. The book is about Nick, who having suffered the horrible loss of his wife, plays the hero and rescues Jenny from her abusive boyfriend. Deciding that he has one last adventure in him, he invites her on a cross-country road trip. Little did they know that the world, as they knew it, was ending. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca to enter into the draw. Simply tell us your favorite horror film by April 14th and be entered. So to, to, to jump off of that, how does the Buffalo Party represent all of Saskatchewan? And well, while, while it's great that you can say we'd listen to people, Saskatchewan's a very diverse uh, uh population and let's be honest if you go talk to people in prince albert and you go talk to uh, people in uh, swift current or even where you are you're going to hear different things you have to have a majority of mlas or a majority of people in the legislature to vote on certain issues but if you have 80 something odd uh different uh, voices it's going to be hard to pass that so how do you see yourself representing everyone but also sticking true to that value of being a true constituents MLA and not a party MLA? Well, like even, you know, with our recent, we had our recent AGM, you know, which was the board's goal was to uh, get to that first AGM, adopt the constitution and uh, have representation from all over the province. And that was the a really awesome thing about the event was we had every, we had people from Cutknife, Kindersley, Saskatoon, um, Tisdale, you know, from all all areas of the province, which was to us was just like, this is awesome, you know, because people traveled seven, eight hours, you know, to, to come to the event. Um, and then we offered an online version as well, which uh, we had a great representation from around the province for people who were able to watch it online and vote online on the different uh, measures and board members, right? So that's that's what our goal is, is and, and, and uh, you know, like our, we had some of the uh, people from cut knife who were there who were talking to us about some of the forestry problems you know and, and the logging problems that they're having and uh do i know about those nope i i what i read a little bit but do i know the ins and outs i don't those guys do and and i and that's what and that's what uh for me is 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 compartmentalizing the province right so there's 61 constituencies you start to build cas in all of the constituencies with people who know the area and they understand what's happening and in uh, those places and we have a policy and governance convention that's coming up on the 29th of may 28th or 29th which is on the website (laughs) yep that's right and that like that is where the people of the province and we have gotten i'm going to say 70 plus resolutions sent to the board for presentation from all over the province with all different types of policy that will be um, you know, the, the wording will be drafted and it'll be presented to the floor. And then, and again, the membership is going to vote. I don't, uh, I, I don't get to steer that as the leader at, at this convention. I can speak as a member of the, of the party. Um, but I can't, I'm not going to steer policy one way or the other. Right. And it's going to be voted on by the, again, we're a member driven group. It's not an, auto, an, an, an autocratic society where I say here, this is the new policy and I hope you like it. It doesn't work like that. So, um, so the voted on uh, policy that's going to be coming forward, I'll be the advocate for presenting that to the different communities around the province. And, and those people will help me to prepare uh, to resolve those issues, right? Because um, the best way is it, to, to resolve issues with whether it's supply chain or process or, or permitting, uh, you know, a lot of the business owners I, I talk to, you know, say that it's so difficult to do business in Saskatchewan because you want to do a business, but you have to get approval from eight different agencies. And by the time you you figure out which eight agencies you need to go to, you just don't even want to do it anymore. 
Um, so those are all things that things simple and, and people want to do business with us. And, and, and that's, and that's the other part of it is when we start to show that we can use common sense and make, you know, and, and make the province healthy again, other provinces will say, well, why aren't we doing that too? How, if they can do it, like we say it all the time, if Quebec can do the things they're doing, well, why can't we do it? I don't know. Well, we can, <laughs> you just have to, you just have to have the, uh, the confidence in yourself and in the people and, and the strength of personality to do it. I agree wholeheartedly with the statement that if Quebec can do it, it should be carte blanche for every other province and territory in our confederation to do exactly what you you cannot have one rule for one and one <laughs> rule for the other. And I <laughs> it's weird. It's a head scratcher. Like and, and let's be honest, it's not just the liberals who do that. It's the conservatives, it's the Greens, it's the NDP. Well, of course, it's the bloc, but let's be honest, if it's good for one, it's good for all. Um, let's talk about the lead up, the lead up to the next election. You are the new leader. You have been just elected uh, last month. You have a lot of work to do heading into 2024. What is job one for you right now? After so, let's not talk about policy convention coming up in May. What's yeah. po- what's next after that? What do you okay, have to next, do to get the message out? The next the next steps um, are going to be. I'm going to I'm going to do as much public speaking as I can, um, and and that's why this is. I'm so happy that you know you invited me to be on your show and given me an opportunity to speak. Uh, so anytime I, I get invited to any type of public speaking event, you know, I'm more than happy to attend. Um, also, uh, my job is, is to start to build the constituencies. Um, the constituencies are the foundation of, uh, of performing well in the next election. And uh, it takes time to travel around the province. Uh, we will gain momentum, right? As we start to, you know, we're still two years out. Um, is an election on most people's minds not really you know uh, it's they're like ah you know it's a long ways out but for us uh, it's not a long ways out and um, uh, so that's what I'll be doing is I'll be traveling around um, hopefully doing lots of speaking events and meeting the people too and uh, and spending the time I think um, politicians now are what I would what I would consider uh, win in flight uh, I've won the election. I'm gone, and you won't see me again. You know, till the next election. So and that's not an Alberta and Ontario thing. That happens in Saskatchewan <laughs> too, because I can tell you, I've never seen my politician since the election, federally and provincially. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that that is again, once you become a a, and I'm just going to call them a a lifer as a politician, um, you forget who you work for. Uh, you you learn the system of politics, and and I think a lot of our leaders and and politicians they feel entitled, uh, the the entitlement that you know hey and we saw it all through all through this pandemic or or whatever you want to call it, um, hey wear your mask don't travel except for me I'm going to still go on my vacation and I'm going to travel and and if I'm not wearing my mask at the airport it's just an oops I really meant to but I was and, totally and, eating at that exact moment <laughs> when that photo was taken trust me everyone right and and I can't believe they caught that one time it was amazing so so again I think that um, my job is to travel around and talk to the people who um, are involved in business are involved in the different segments of Saskatchewan and and start to uh, uh, and, and, you know, like, I'll just quick, here's a segue for you. I was at the old show um, in Weyburn. A uh, guy looks like a grandpa, you know, um, owns a really good construction company in Arcola, Saskatchewan. And uh, he's just like, you know, he, 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 came up, he came up to me and he's like, hey, he's like, uh, let me talk to you a second. I'm like, okay. He goes, so what do you think about this, uh, this these uh, lotteries? These lotteries that we got going on. He goes, $70 million. He goes, does anyone... Does anybody need 70 million bucks, you know, in a lottery win? And I was like, well, I said, I don't know. Lots of people will be happy, you know, but he said, why? He said, why do we have to do 70 million? What? He goes, we do 50 fifties all over the place all the time. Why don't we turn a provincial lottery into a, into a 50 50 win? So, so if it's a $35 million jackpot, 17 million goes to the winner 
17 million goes to the province to use for programming. And I'm like, hmm, not a bad idea, right? Because actually, really, I'd be that. just as happy with 17 million as I would with 35 million. Hey, I'd, be, I'd be happy with a tank of gas with the prices they are, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, but this is just a grandpa with a great construction business, Narcola, and just something that was on his brain, right? And, and when you talk to people and listen, that's how I just thought that was a great idea. And it's a great way. And, and it, you would probably raise more revenue through ticket sales if people knew that that's what the money was going for. So, so I, I think, um, you know, establishing CAs uh, and, and, and getting those like-minded people. And then the next goal is to start looking for candidates. Um, the, you, you need to basically put out a candidate call uh, and say, Hey, um, we know we're, you know, we're 18 months out, but we need time to plan and prepare and fundraise. I mean, those are the, those are the um, big parts of my job, right, is to uh, meet with uh, different uh, people and, and um, agencies and stuff. And, and again, be that face of uh, the Buffalo Party and, and instill that confidence in them that me as the leader, uh, I'm going to advocate for them and, and, and do a good job of it. You know, I, I, I think that when I, when I watch the NDP in motion, I, I don't understand, like, I don't, what exactly are you doing as, a, as an opposition? I mean, I, I told you when I was campaigning, you know, people are like, well, what if you're the only one who wins, right? What if you're the only person in Saskatchewan that wins for the Buffalo Party? I said, I said it's going to be a bad day every day in the legislature for them because they're going to hate me. I said, I'm going to be the fly in the tent that annoys the crap out of them every day because I call them on everything they do. And, and that's the job of, a, of the opposition and especially the leader, right? When, when things are going awry in the government and money's disappearing and things aren't looking right, somebody's got to ask the questions. Like, why not, why not use uh, uh, Freedom of Information Acts to get this information and find out? Ah, no, we, we complained about it for a couple of days. And we, we got our we 15 did. second soundbite <laughs> on question period that we can use on a social media post that yep. nobody watches exactly and then you know what well let's go back to another we'll have a chamber meeting talk about it and that and that's the stuff that you know bothers me is that there is no uh checks and balances right now in saskatchewan either um you know the SAS party can can do whatever they want they know that they're not going to get any pushback uh, from the ndp at all and uh, i feel sorry you know for the people that are represented by the ndp and like I said, I, I, you know, I've debated uh, a couple of them in the events. I think Trent Witherspoon's a great speaker and uh, intellectual guy. Um, who, breaking news, will be on the show in a few weeks. Uh, I think either this week oh, or next great. week. So we we ha we're trying to get the whole gambit. We're not we 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 love everyone. Any political party wants to come on the show, they can come on. But Trent just said he's coming on the show, so I'm holding it to him. So That's I awesome. will ask some follow up questions to what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can you can you can you can tell Trent that I said he's a nice guy because I really did enjoy. Uh, getting to meet him and, and debating with him at uh, the event in Regina. And um, like I said, he, he's a, Trent's a nice guy. I just don't like his politics. And, and he said the same thing about me. He's, he said, you're a nice guy. I like some of your politics, but not all of them. And, and uh, we just kind of laughed and uh, went on our ways, you know, but um, so I, I think, I, I think, the, go, go ahead. ahead. I'll, I'll let you finish up and then I'll ask the sort of the, the, the wrap up question before we start closing up here. Yep. No, I just, I, I think that, um, the number one job and we can do this even not being in the legislature is hold the SAS party accountable and we're figuring out ways how to do that and to change SAS party policy without even being in the legislature i think we're more effective right now than the ndp in terms of getting the SAS party to say oh oh well, maybe we should do this and they're doing it so that's why we always say if you want to see SAS party 2.0 just go to buffalo party um, website and uh, you'll find out what they're going to do next would you, for anyone who was listening to this or watching this, uh, pull over if you're listening to this in the car, scroll down. It's in the show notes. Check it out. That's right. Because you awesome. highly recommend it. Also, all the social medias as well. Um, you talked about getting candidates. You talked about getting constituents. 61 constituencies in uh, Saskatchewan, 61 candidates. Will you pledge right here right now I, I like i like asking this to leaders because i like, <laughs> to, like to see how they squirm out of it or they get put on the record yeah. 
Will you guarantee Saskatchewan residents who are listening to this right now, they will have the opportunity to vote for a Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan candidate in the 2024 or before, depending on if Scott Moe calls it early or it goes later, the next provincial election. Will you field 61 candidates for every Saskatchewan resident to have the opportunity to vote for? My, my goal is to fill all 61 constituencies. Uh, I want to have quality candidates, not just a body. Uh, if I had a crystal ball, um, I would know and could tell you the future for sure. But my goal is just 61 quality candidates. And I, I believe that as the Buffalo party grows and as the current political parties keep doing what they're doing, the momentum for Buffalo is just going to continue to grow more and more. And I, I really believe that I can fill all 61 uh, seats. And the other thing too, look what we did with 17. Uh, can you imagine what we can do with 61? Uh, we'll be a massive force to be reckoned with. And, and uh, like I said, we, we're already influencing policy. And, and as a, when you, you know, when you read books of, of war or Machiavellian type of uh, strategy, well, if you can't beat it, just represent it. Right. So we, we can't think of anything better. So we're just going to kind of swallow up some of their policy, which is why I'm not going to disclose uh, a lot of the <laughs> awesome things that we have for Saskatchewan until we get closer to election time. Because you think you, you think people are smiling now at what the Buffalo Party is doing. We have got some I, I call them brilliant guys in our background. And we have some brilliant ideas of how to not tax the citizens of Saskatchewan, how to create revenue for the province and how to make this the number one place to be in Saskatchewan, in Canada, period. So, uh, so much to come, but uh, the SAS party is just gonna have to wait because uh, they're not gonna get that intel until it's it's too late. Um, Phil, uh, I have one last question for you. And that is, how can people learn more? While it's great that you can come on shows like this, tour, yep. some people might not have the opportunity to ask you a question one-on-one. -on -one. How can they reach out and ask, actually ask you a question? Get your opinion on a certain issue that they are, because we've tried to t cover a lot in 45 minutes. Yeah, Guarantee yeah, you well, there's that. one person yelling at their t a YouTube channel or <laughs> car radio saying, why didn't you ask them this? So how yeah. can they, how can people ask you questions? Uh, the best way, the best way is to reach out to the party itself. Um, you can always, uh, we have uh, people that monitor the email. Uh, they are setting up, because this is still really new, they're setting up my leader uh, email, which will, app, yeah, it'll be easy. It'll be leader at Buffalo Party, uh, S-K-C-A um, dot C-A. And um, that'll be easy. And the other way is by Facebook, right? Right, right now, Facebook's a good uh, avenue for. I'm easy to find. You know, it's Philip Zajac, and uh, you'll see my Buffalo uh, logo behind me. So it's, you know, if there's other, there is some other Philip Zajacs in the world, and um, but I'm the one with the Buffalo behind me, and that's a great place too. You can, you know, you can shoot me a private message there. I don't do a lot of uh, public messaging back and forth on Facebook. It's, I don't think it's the right avenue. Um, I'll post stuff and just let people talk, and uh, I learned that. In politics quite a while ago and uh, but if, if it is an important message message me personally and i i prefer to talk on the phone um that i i you know i'm i'm uh, kind of old school and uh i just think that you know if you're taking the time because you care to send a message that's important to you um i will respond to you either preferably by telephone um and and you know as it gets closer to election time that's almost impossible too because the messages become more and more and more but as of right now, um, we're not in the election cycle and I do have that time, you know, to uh, address people individually. And, and I think that speaks a lot to people too, you know, that, hey, this guy, you know, he's willing to take the time, you know, even when I was making my phone calls, you know, for the leadership race, you know, calling members, they're just like, wow, you called, you know, they're like, well, that was really nice, you know, and, and um, so I just think you know that um again you can email the party and the party will forward the email to me too if you have a question and if it's a, about a certain thing about you know policy or whatever um i might not have the best answer right and the party will uh, say hey you know what the vp of uh, policy and governance can answer this question for you and they'll send a, a response as well but uh, again if you you know if you are watching the show and you have any I, i'm going to do a little plug to uh, have any interest in politics and want to help the buffalo party uh, we got Saskatchewan and Alberta. Alberta's, you know, got their own Buffalo Party thing going, and 
they're great people too. And uh, feel free to reach out because we are, you know, it, it, the time is now. It, two, two years seems like a long time, but in politics, it's pretty short. So, Well, hopefully now that I've had you on the show, the leader of the Buffalo Party of Alberta will get back to me so I can have yep. them on the show. Um, but Phil, this has been a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. Um, uh, like you said, if you, uh, like Phil said to my listeners, if you want to reach out, I will have Phil's social media accounts, the Buffalo Party of Saskatchewan social media accounts in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, scroll down. If you're watching this on, an, if you're listening to this on a new platform, just go back onto the main page, scroll down, you'll find it. And also if you're on Twitter, the Twitter handle for the Buffalo Party will be there as well. Um, Phil, honor and pleasure to do this and i'm so happy that we got a chance to chat and you see this is awesome yeah yeah you got a great show and i i'm i'm same thing i'm honored to be on it and and um i'll tell you that uh the the other political parties uh, i don't care provincially or federally uh, buffalo party's coming and uh just be ready because uh we're going to be a force to be reckoned with and and we already are Awesome. So with that, I want to thank Phil for joining us this fine Monday morning or Monday or whatever day you're listening to this, if you're not listening to the day it airs. But thank you so much. Uh, Remember, everyone, get out from behind that social media account. Go have a conversation with somebody. It actually does make life better and it helps democracy grow. We do not need to have a conversation in 240 characters and we need to stop that. So with that, I'm Chris Brown of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember everyone, keep talking. 